going to our discussion segments right, right now, but we will be taking uh, Johnson Chuku, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Carry Assets Management. I know we had uh, uh, done a promo on social media, but we're trying uh, to get that sorted. Um, let's speak to Mr. Chuku. Mr. Chuku, are you there? Yes, Nancy. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. And you? I'm well. Thank God. Uh, one day at a time, isn't it? Uh, especially, <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially as we are battling community transmission right now. We don't even know what's happening in Kano. Uh, we don't know what's happening right now, you know, across the country. Uh, let, let me get my uh, question on the road. How do you think, because I think today is the last day of uh, the extended two weeks lockdown, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Yes, Chuka? I think by 11 p.m. this night. Yes, today. Is. Is being okay, so we should be expecting to hear from the government uh, later uh, today. Anyway, but, but, the, but the question is, okay, before I ask the main question, but the question is, shouldn't the government come out earlier to tell us what it wants to do than giving us barely a 24 hours notice of whether the lockdown will continue or not just like they gave us a 24 hour notice that they were going to do a lockdown at initial time do you understand what i'm saying uh mr chuku yeah. uh, yes nancy actually i uh, discussed that with somebody yesterday and uh, my position was that uh, the government did to have informed us as what case in at the end of the uh, Day yesterday, what they plan to do. It was, it's not right for the government to ambush the citizens because when you come at the last minute and make your announcement, people need to plan their lives. People need to. Uh, and you're talking about business people. The people don't just live by the day, they plan their days and plan their work. So uh, if it's an emergency that can live with, okay, they shut down immediately because we have a falling uh, sky or not. But for the opening or for the station, we needed to have informed people, uh, giving people enough uh, advance notice. There's no point coming the last minute to ambush them and just say them. It, it, it defeats uh, planning that is required in, in human endeavor. And um, I think all business persons uh, that you have in this country, and even now they don't want to plan their lives. They want to know what they will do tomorrow. As you speak, nobody knows where they're going to go to work tomorrow. Nobody knows if they're going to need some partial mission and they continue the... Um, the lockdown, if you're going to continue, you, know, you need to plan how you will survive in the next one week or two weeks, how long will the uh, subsequent uh, station last, or if uh, the, some business will resume tomorrow, which business will resume tomorrow, if your business is not affected, how do you plan your your activities? I think the delaying it to the last minute is not uh, the right thing to do. Mm. Why do you think that we're not seeing enough planning, especially from government? It seems that most of their responses are normally knee-jerk responses, especially as we started fighting this pandemic. A lot of people ha did say at the beginning that if government had, uh, you know, prepared or earlier responded, let's say like a week or two weeks, we wouldn't have gotten into the squagmire. Uh, uh, it, seemed, it seemed that uh, the president was forced uh, to ensure a, a total lockdown or at least ensure lockdown in FCT Ogun and Abuja. Perhaps he was also watching what his other African uh, uh, colleagues uh, were doing. Now, the nation would, the two weeks lockdown would expire level 59 p.m. today and Nigerians are today, Nigerians don't even know what to do, whether there will be an extended lockdown or there will be a relaxation of it. So uh, are you seeing adequate planning coming from the government at all levels? You know, Nancy, uh, what we are seeing is a manifestation of some of the weaknesses we've had as a country for a very long time. Uh, to, they say those who first who first the plan, plan to fail. And um, consistently, some of the reasons why our country has not progressed in the Committee of Nations is our failure to plan. And when we even have some level of uh, planning, the implementation will become very woeful. Uh, the reality is that if you look at countries that have uh, progressed, take for instance China that has brought uh, this pandemic to the world, you will see big decades of planning. Look at the educational system. Before you have a ninety percent literacy level, it takes almost 30 years of diligent planning and hard work. Because you're going to have it, 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 several generations of people who have got, got to that education. Uh, what we have constantly seen is that as a country, we fail to plan. I mean, what in this instance this has actually exposed us is the level of tardiness in our planning process. I mean, before uh, uh, coronavirus hit us in February, 
several countries were already in the crisis, and we knew Italy was already in crisis, Spain was in crisis, um, uh, France was in crisis, Iran was in crisis, and and uh, we seem not to have planned that if we, if we come here. You know what what blew my mind was when, with all due respect, the NCDC is doing a great job. With when the the DG said that the first set of samples were taken to South Africa for uh, analysis, I was shocked. I was shocked to my mother. I said, why would you as a country, why would you as a country know that this is affecting our country? And our people travel a lot. And we did not bother to build one molecular uh, lab in the country before the first uh, infection came in. And then um, the other countries would have done better planning. Look at what's happening in Ghana. You know, when you look at the figure of number of people tested in Ghana, number of people in, 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 in uh, in Nigeria, nice you feel sad. You feel sad for for your country. You feel sad for yourself uh, because it, this is height of failure as a nation. There is no reason why Ghana would have tested close to seventy thousand or more, and we are still at ten thousand. There's just no reason. Is it in terms of human capacity? Do they have more hours? Is it in terms of economic resources? Is it in terms of medical uh, uh, competence? It's just one thing that is missing: failure to plan and. That is way, why we are seeing this level of community uh, transmission. Nobody knows the level of infection we have in the country. Because before you begin to talk about the level of infection we have in the country, you must have a reasonable uh, size of sample. We've not done a reasonable sample, and that reasonable sample will come to the level of, higher level of testing. That we say, okay, we've tested uh, 100,000 and we only have uh, 10,000. In, uh, in 10,000. But if I've only tested 10,000, I have 10,000. We are talking about. Uh, occurrence rate of 10%. And, I mean, if you have 10,000, you have 1,000. You have occurrence rate of 10%, 11%. And that, 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 so nobody can actually measure assistance today, the level of inflation we have in the country. Because we have failed to do the little things that matter. How do you think the government should uh, manage this trade off between protecting the health of Nigerians and protecting uh, the economy? When and how? Uh, should the decision about returning to work be made? I think for me it's a straightforward uh, uh, decision for the government. One, we are not doing mass uh, lockdowns are based on the fact that you want to move ahead of the uh, infection. And what, because basically, basically what you want to do is that at the price those who are infected, isolate them so they don't infect the level. If you're not carrying out tests, you are not able to identify people who are infected. You are not able to isolate them. So your lockdown will achieve minimal benefit uh, in terms of infection. Because I know, as it stands today, that the, uh, the, the inside of the cities, or the inner cities, as you call them, people are moving around. People I can mingle. I mean, I saw in the past today that the police in Lagos arrested more than 121 people that had breached the lockdown. I have called, I call around people, and I hear places like Idimu, people are going to nightclubs, people like Festa, people are going to bars, and more. The person um, in the interiors of the city, people are living their normal life, interacting the way they shouldn't be interacting on the streets of lockdown. So, yes, the lockdown enforcement has gradually, gradually collapsed. Because people have to come out and find ways to feed themselves. People have to find out and sustain their lives uh, over this period. Because the government has also failed, or is not even in a position to support the society the way it should to uh, ensure people stay at home. So if you continue to lock down the, uh, the, 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 those three cities, and the level of testing is not massive, Germany say they want to try and save 500,000 people. The, the task, that Germany was saving about 500,000 every day. U.S. wants to test two million every day. It's only when you get that level of testing that you can say, "Look, I am going to flatten the curve because I can reasonably identify all those who are infected, and I will isolate them so that they are separated." But if you are doing a 600 uh, test, uh, at best we say we don't have the capacity to test 3,000, but because of Difficulties in collecting samples, we can't test up to 1,000. So the problem is that the lockdown is not achieving as much as it should. And you are basically transferring, shifting from a medical crisis to an economic crisis. Mm. Now, how about, how about for those that say that we shouldn't, uh, that the government shouldn't lift the restrictions right now? Because if they lift the restrictions and everyone goes back to work, 
at this time, there's already community transmission. The community transmission would increase as a result of that. And we really, at this point, do not have the testing capacity. Uh, I think I heard the Minister of um, Health did say that, you know, we still need more testing kits that I think that we're running out of them now, <laughs> you know. And I heard people say, where's Jack, Sma Jack Ma's uh, uh, contribution how about even yeah. the, the CACOVID uh, uh, response, which you, you contributed uh, to. So if the government opens the gates now and everybody goes back to work, aren't you uh, concerned and perturbed about perhaps that community transmission would increase and... Uh, Anybody, it can happen to anybody because you may not, you will not even be able to protect yourself as it were. You may wear a mask or wash your hand, but you don't know the next person who is carry, who is who, who can infect or who can contract the virus. Okay, that, that, that's where well, that's where I said from when I said look, um, if you have a lockdown but there's no testing going on, then why are you achieving you? Basically, in the end of starving those who have very weak, people have weak economic uh, power. Uh, because people are not being tested, ultimately, infection is still going on. Uh, you still have a large population of asymptomatic people who are infected. The day you open the lockdown, you will, they will still be infected. The key thing about lockdown, the reason why other countries lockdown is because they wanted to protect the infection. And what they did was carry out massive testing and identify those who were infected and isolated them so they could infect other people. Today, the infected people are not being tested, they're not being isolated. You could say, okay, for those who live in the high brow area, they are expected the lockdown, so they stay with their family because they don't need anything, they can afford to be home for three months. But those in the inner cities can't afford that. They are intermingling, they are um, doing their business. I went out on a walk with my wife this morning, and I saw a, a yellow buses. And I said, my wife, look at yellow buses. I saw an ambulance that was being used for to transport people uh, at commuter bus. Because this was an ambulance, they felt that the police won't stop them. So the key thing is that people are at the, uh, the end of their capacity to sustain lockdown, particularly those that are not Because the interventions in terms of social support the government is supposed to do seem not to have been uh, getting to those who needed it or who need it most. So if you do not have those palliatives and you consider the lockdown, you are going to create a problem that is more severe than the health problem. And ultimately, only delaying the inclusion in the health crisis. Because uh, as long as people are not tested, uh, isolated, then the day you open the lockdown, they will see it. So the key thing is this. We need to find ways to gradually uh, lift the lockdown. And then start from those activities that involve minimal human interaction. And then encourage people to observe social distancing, observe uh, hand washing, use sanitizer, use face mask, uh, face mask, then you will be able to restore some level of livelihood to those who do not live by the day. Otherwise, they also run the risk of dying from hunger. We can, if we are, if I can hear today that look, give us two more weeks, we're going to pay 500,000 every day. Lagos is 50 million. In 10 days, I would have done five, uh, 5 million. And then if you target those who are most likely exposed, and you know five million, you would have um, you would have flattened the curve. But we are, we are not doing that. Unless you do that, then the purpose of continuous lockdown is it's not achieving any 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 benefit. Now, uh, M M Mr. Chuku, it seems uh, I've listened to both sides of the argument and both sides of the conversation. Lift the lockdown uh, to to save livelihoods. Don't leave the lockdown yet so that we can at least chase or fight uh, COVID-19 uh, to its letter. But at this point, don't you think that both sides are also on that probability because it's still unclear which strategy is working. Uh, if we see what's, been, what's happening across the world now, at least majority of the countries across the world, the US, U, uh, Europe and, and what have you, they do have lockdowns. Some have extended even till May. I also took a look at the Sweden strategy, whereby Sweden did not enforce uh, lockdowns. They're still, you know, going to restaurants, they're going to their cafes, schools are open. But what I also noticed is that among, I think, the Scandinavian, I didn't, Sweden, isn't it? Yes. 
they, they have more cases of infection than others. But what I also realized is that because they did not ensure full or total lockdown, the, 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 you know, the challenges that the economy will have will not be as severe as the rest of the countries in the, in the Nordic areas like Norway and Finland. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. Yes. So, so it's somehow unclear which strategy would work because this coronavirus is, is still novel. And we are still trying to uh, understand the ramifications of, of it. I think one works should depend on the implemented of this nation. Um, this has proven that we can eat what one other country is, and that country is being in your own country. Some have, like Sweden, had a different approach. Denmark had a different approach. Denmark was the first to lock down, but now Denmark had lifted their lockdown and school, allowed schools to resume and what have you. Um, uh, countries like um, U.S. delayed in locking down, just like um, U.K., and then we are seeing massive uh, infections. But the difference between some of these Western countries and Nigeria is this. Uh, in Western countries, the government has the economic resources to lock down. In Western countries, the government has the capacity to support the citizens. Uh, in Africa, particularly in Nigeria, we lack the economic resources to support the citizens. In Western countries, the, the nature of race residential accommodation is different. In Nigeria, the people we are talking about are living in place and places. So there is actually nothing called uh, social uh, distancing in those places. I know of areas in Lagos, I can tell you, I live in Lagos, that people live, you have 20 families in a single building. And in that building there, maybe 10 rooms on one side and 10 rooms on another side, and uh, each of these families could have three, four children. So you are talking of we have 20 families in such, you have like 40 people in the building, and you are talking of social distancing, that's what kind of social distancing you are talking about. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chuku, thank you for uh, joining us now. Uh, we'll continue to watch the situation closely and see what the government does. Perhaps at the end of today, uh, the government has been slow to act. It's no longer news now. We are not, it's not a matter of padding or, uh, you know, uh, painting it in such a way that it's not just like you said, Nigerians should know at this point what will happen. Thank you very much, Mr. Chuku, for joining me.